Hello, this is Deputy Chief Mark Close with the Bedford Fire Department. Here today to talk to you in regards to emergency preparedness. As most of you know, Hurricane Irene is bearing down on the Northeast in New England for this coming weekend. The Town of Bedford wants to make sure that you and your family are prepared to deal with this weather event. The Town of Bedford has set up an emergency website, emergency preparedness website page on the Town of Bedford's website. So if you have access to a computer or a smartphone, what you'll need to do is go to a web browser, click on the web browser, type in bedfordnh.org, hit enter, and it will bring you right to the Town of Bedford website. Once you're on the website, what you need to do is come right over here to the left-hand side, to the tab located to the left where it says departments and once you hit the put cursor on the department you're going to come over here to the right and you're going to go to the fourth one down named emergency management click the emergency management tab and what that will do is bring you right up to the emergency ma management and preparedness page all the information that you need to prepare you and your family is located right here with additional links the co-emergency managers for the town of Bedford are the following. Scott Wigan, the fire chief, and David Bailey, the police chief. If you need or have any questions regarding emergency preparedness, you can also contact the fire department at 603-472-3219. What I'm going to talk about today is if you go up here to the additional links, how to assemble a disaster supply kit. It had, this page will have all the additional information that you need to prepare for the upcoming weather events. Now what I'd like to talk to you about is actually doing the preparedness. What, we'd like to, what we're asking you folks to do is to be prepared for 72 hours. That's three days. These three days are crucial for you to be self-sufficient before supplies and, and, and other things are available to the community. You probably already have most of the items on the list, but what you need to do is you need to get those and gather those items and put them in one central location so you know you have them in the time of need. Some of the things that we're going to talk about today that you should have are definitely on this list. So go ahead and go to the website and download a copy of this page. One of the most important things that you need to have on hand is a supply of drinking water. It takes a minimum of one gallon per person a day for water. So depending on how big your family is, for the three days you need a minimum of three gallons of water for each person. You can also buy bottled water and have that on hand. If you have your water supply comes from a municipal water supply such as Penichuk Water Works or Manchester Water Works, you should still be able to use your municipal water and in, in your, your water from the tap with no problem. Depending on the, the weather event and how if we receive flooding, they may have you boil the water just to kill any bacteria that may get into the water supply. Now for you folks that use a well and the well pump runs off the electricity, if you lose power, you may not be able to use your well pump unless your house is already has a generator. So what we're asking you to do is to prepare for the possibility of losing electrical power. So one of the things that we ask you to do is to fill your tub. Fill your tub as far as high as it will go that you can have that extra water to wash, bathe, and flush your toilets. Um, also, if you have any five-gallon buckets or empty milk jugs, fill those also so you can have that extra water on hand. If you need be, you can at least boil the water for drinking water to kill the bacteria. Some food items. Now, with the food items, obviously canned foods are the best. Uh, you have uh, box juices, uh, once again, bottled water. Uh, if you need to, for young kids, if you need milk products, you can buy some uh, powdered milk. P 
Peanut butter is always good to have on hand. Crackers, granola bars, cereals, and trail mixes. One of the things that uh, we would also like to see you have on hand is a first aid supply. Obviously, uh, you know, that's scissors, bandages, gauze pads, some cotton balls, safety pins, uh, and antibiotic ointments. Some of the other things that uh, you need to put in your preparedness kit is to make sure that you have flashlight with extra batteries. Uh, you're looking at having some, um, some matches, some hand sanitizer, towelettes, soap that you can um, at least uh, wash your hands uh, if need be, extra clothing, supplies for, the, for young children, babies, and the elderly. One of the things that uh, we ask you to do is to make sure that you have 72 hours or three days worth of medicines and that if, uh, you know, that way you can once again be self-sufficient. If you're running low on prescription medications, please contact your primary care physician and or the pharmacy to get your uh, prescription renewed so you have enough. Now, one of the things is, is that as we've seen in the ice storm of 08 and the windstorm of 2010, is that your mobility may be limited or impeded. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, due to down trees, wires, and washed out roads. So once again, you have to be self-sufficient. Now, most of you, uh, if you lose power, you can still... Uh, manage to uh, cook and to boil water if you have an outside propane gas grill. Take it away far enough away from the house and you can still cook and boil water on it. <coughs> Excuse me. One of the things that we saw with the two storms uh, in recent histories is we all live by Blackberry cell phones, smartphones, is that once we lose power, how do we recharge our batteries? To be prepared, you can go and get a vehicle charger, and you can charge your, your phones inside your vehicles. We, what we ask you is, is that you please do not run your vehicle inside your garage, because obviously this will introduce carbon monoxide into your home. If you need to start your vehicle, back your vehicle out into the driveway, far enough away from the house, run it, and charge your phone. Most of the time, you won't need to run your vehicle just to charge your cell phone. But that's a great way to keep in contact. That way, because if you need to get on the, the, um, on the web and to check for emergency information, you have that availability. One of the other things is that if, you're, if your house has a generator or you have a generator and it's not pre-wired by a licensed electrician, what we ask you to do is to keep that generator a safe distance away from your home, not to allow the carbon monoxide to go back in. So please do not run your generator in your cellar, in your garage, or on your deck near um, a door or a window. Carbon monoxide is a tasteless and odorless gas um, in that you can become very sick and or uh, you could die by carbon monoxide poisoning. If you do use a generator and you have spare fuel, uh, what we're asking you to do is to make sure that it's stored in a proper um, container and that it's also stored in a proper area. Please don't leave it next to the generator or in front of the, uh, the exhaust. Keep it away, keep it off combustible decks, um, you know, and store it out of the way. Uh, that way it doesn't take the chance of catching on fire. Well, the other things that we ask you to do is check on your neighbors. You know, if you have an elderly neighbor uh, near you, check on them. Check on their well-being. If you find that you need assistance, what we're asking you to do is to contact, uh, obviously the number earlier was the Bedford Fire Department at 603-472-3219. Uh, with the incoming weather pending, uh, you know, if the fire crews are busy, you, we want you to contact the Bedford Emergency Dispatch Center at 603-472-3219. 5113. Once again, that's the emergency, Bedford Emergency Dispatch Center at 603-472-5113. So please be vigilant and check on your neighbors to make sure they're all right um, if they lose power over the, <clears throat> the following weekend. 
At the end of this program, you're going to see a, an additional slide uh, that will have websites where you can find additional information, such as the state of New Hampshire, um, emergency management and homeland security, and the American Red Cross. They all provide pretty much the same information that we are providing you today to make sure that you and your family are prepared for 72 hours. Once again, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or any safety <clears throat> issues that you want the Bedford Fire Department to come out and investigate, please don't hesitate to contact us. Let us come out and make the evaluation for you. So once again, you can contact the Bedford Fire Department at 472-3219 or the Bedford Emergency Dispatch Center at 472-5113. We hope you find this information informative and hope it will assist you in preparing and protecting yourself, your family, and your loved ones in the event of emergency. This is Deputy Chief Mark Close with the Bedford Fire Department. Thank you and be safe.